Welcome to Bridge to the Atlantic. We are your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm award-winning singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Marcia Novelli, founder of the electronic rock band Midnight Soundtrack. This week, we're pleased to welcome Michael McCarran, founder of Punk Out, to the show. Punk Out is a non-profit organization that wants to create a movement of acceptance in the alternative music scene. Punk Out works to start conversations, make LGBTQ plus community members and their issues more visible, remove the taboo within the alternative music community, and increase overall acceptance of everyone. We're looking forward to diving into some of the issues faced by the community and how Punk Out musicians and music fans can make a positive change. Hey, Michael. Hey, guys. How's it going? Well, Good. How are you? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm living life today. I'm just going to I'm just going to point out that Ross said good, I said I'm well. This is the beginning of our conversation on proper grammar for the this former is, English teacher. <laughs> did did I lose point. a point? You yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you already did. Yeah, you got to be a <laughs> well, stickler for that. You got to call everything out. That's right. And we're, this is yeah. going to be the interview. Uh, so tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Well, uh, let's see. So, I'm an avid music fan. And I'm an avid sports fan, and I'm also very, very, very gay. So I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy like pushing those boundaries, and um, you know, having fun. And so, so tell us what what does it mean to be very gay, other than just gay? <laughs> well, what it means to be very gay is is that um, you acknowledge your gayness and you go for it. You go Good. for it. So yeah, nice. Cool. <laughs> I was expecting a bit more, but a yeah, no, 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 no. That's just—it's how I describe myself in my OK profile. I just I love say it. Very, very, very gay. It's the third very that really gets you. It's the third one. That's what it was. At first, I was like, you know. So tell us about. We want to talk talk uh, about Punk Out and just get right into it. Yeah. Why did you start Punk Out? And um, maybe tell us about some of the work you've done with it. Yeah. So um, Punk Out's relatively new. We've been around for. Oof, since March of 24, March of 2013. And uh, I started Punk Out because, like I said, I'm, I'm very, very, very gay. And uh, what I found is there's not many people in our alternative music scene who are out about that and, um, and about their queerness. Um, so we started uh, uh, Punk Out couple years ago to see if we can build that community um, to encourage musicians to come out because you know like you were saying I, I, I'm a former school teacher and so seeing how kids interact and you know they can hear messages from adults and their parents saying it's, it gets better and um, everything's going to improve and we're in a more inclusive environment but you know it really goes in one ear and out the other uh, sort of like a lot of my English lessons and <laughs> yeah. And um, so what I found is a better way to reach some of these kids is through the music that they listen to. And then w what we found is, you know, that's a great idea, except you need musicians who are willing to speak out and to relate to these kids. And oftentimes what we find is these musicians don't even have the, the they don't have the community themselves. And so what we try to do at Punk Out is address the individual musicians first in the hopes that, you know, we can kind of build them up. And then through building them up, they can kind of amplify our message and get it out to the kids. So we don't directly go to fans as much as we go directly to the musician, try to help them out. And through that, they're able to kind of take our message and run with it. Well, uh, Ross and I love what you guys are doing. And uh, you guys have been, you've been very supportive of what we've been doing too, which yeah. has been really cool. And uh, it's, it's always good uh, to start developing camaraderie like that within like-minded individuals. You know, yeah. and coming together and building a, a loving community. Yeah, and you know, I don't have any Canadian friends right now, so. Well, here we go. Yeah, there you go. I'll be your first and, Canuck friend. Yeah. Sorry, Ross. I have a couple UK friends, but. You know, <laughs> well, he, do you have any Scottish friends one. though? Do you have any Scottish friends? No, no, no. There no. you we go. Actually, we have somebody on go. staff though. We have somebody from, on staff from um from Dublin. So. Well, that's, that's Ireland. That's. That's different. Oh, oh it's yeah. okay. He would, take, he would take exception to that. It's all right. I'll give you a geography lesson. You can give me an English lesson. I'll give you a geography <laughs> lesson and we'll call it even. I, right. I love it. I love it. Okay. Or Belfast. No, Belfast. Uh, Belfast, Northern Ireland? Northern Ireland. So part of the UK. Okay, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. But okay, Belfast. That's Northern Ireland, right? Yeah. That's Northern Ireland, so part of the UK, yeah. All right, Ross, you're still going to have to give you that geography lesson. I'll still give you the geography <laughs> lesson. You'll right. still give me an English lesson and we'll still be called. We'll still be yeah. Good. There we go. We'll call it. Equal. Cool. So your uh, your your blogs feature some 
great interviews and guest posts. I wrote a guest post uh, a while ago. That, and, that was uh, the worst one, though, sorry. Well, obviously. Uh, I, you know, I probably said good instead of well. Um, <laughs> But you, uh, you've had some, yeah, you've had a lot of really great uh, guest posts from a lot of uh, artists as well. And they're, they're probably ones I enjoy the most, um, like hearing the artist stories. Because I think, I think what, you're, what you're aiming to do, like by getting the artists to share their stories, it will encourage, you know, fans to, you know, to share their stories and to feel like they've got someone out there they can relate to, maybe someone they look up to that, you know, is going through or has gone through what they're going through. Mm-hmm. Can you maybe share a couple of the highlights uh, from the past couple of years with us? Yeah, so let me give you a little background on what we do in terms of our editorial section. We're really big on driving conversation. I always say to my team that you know we don't want to let words get in the way of progress. And I think a lot of times what we see, um, you know, you see on these music forums, um, and I won't name any sites, but you know, there's some music forums out there that really stifle conversation in terms of <laughs> Uh, social issues, political issues, um, and we see that as a big issue. You know, we see that as a big issue. And so, one of the things we try to do with our artist corner section, which is where we get you know musicians and industry folk to come in and kind of talk about ideas uh, that kind of relate to the LGBTQ plus community, is that we want to build that that forum for expression and for differing ideas within a respectful community. Um, and so, you know, Ross really appreciate you writing for the for the site but that's only one perspective and we want everybody to kind of see a, a wide array of perspectives because we think that's how you you do progress um, and you move progress um, in terms of some of the highlights of this, the site you know we're really big you know I'm, I'm a huge music fan um, and so whenever I get to kind of really focus specifically on music I get excited and one of the things I like as a fan is is hearing about the inspiration behind songs so um, you know we had Brent Rambler from uh, August Burns Red on and uh, he was the primary songwriter for a track off their most recent record um, the tracks called Identity and we just thought it, it like worked fucking perfectly like it, it was just perfect in every way in terms of what our message is and so we got had him on and you know i had a had a great interview with him i think we, we talked for like two hours and you know that was right before he was going on his honeymoon so i'm sure he was trying to get out of there but like i just couldn't shut up i was like oh you need to tell me more about why you wrote this you need to tell me more about this you need to tell me more about this so we really like to get artists up there to talk about what inspires them uh we had julia nunez on uh, a couple weeks ago and she she wrote a great op-ed. Um, I love I love when I get to see my favorite artists kind of talk about things that they don't necessarily usually talk about. Um, you know, oftentimes they're talking about music, but when we can get them out of there and show you know our supporters that the musicians they look up to are just like them and have opinions just like them, um, it really goes a long way into building those relationships with those kids who, you know, are struggling to come out, but that they get to read, you know, their favorite artist write about this experience and they go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, this is something I'm down with. This is something that I can relate to. Um, and so that's kind of what we try to do with our editorial um, section of our site. Um, and uh, something that always like drives me insane is when people call us a blog. You, you know how many people call us a blog? It drives me insane. I'm like, I, we didn't go through all that that government red tape to be called a to be called a blog. <laughs> uh, but but in reality, I mean, the the blog portion of what we do is super important to driving the conversation and hopefully you know making some some impactful change uh, and and real change on the grounds because you know too often we see people who kind of can sit behind a keyboard and not do anything you know actually on the ground and what we try to do is use the blog as one portion of our attack in terms of trying to forward that that gay agenda that we ha- hear politicians always talk about <laughs> at least over here in the, the big gay agenda corrupting children oh yeah that's that's my goal 100 no, we're in canada here that's like we're like 20 years past that we're like 10, at least 10 years past that you guys will catch up one day Oh, well, I heard your prime minister is having some, uh, he's going to, he's in an election battle. So. Yeah, our prime minister, the way our, our whole system works differently. There's only like 30% of the whole country that even, that even supports him. But because yeah. we, have, we have, you guys have like Democrats, Republicans, basically we have two, we have like one right wing party and then like four left wing party. So we yeah. end up getting split voting and then conservatives get in, even though one third of the country only votes for them. So it's kind of like, they got to do something about that. But I uh, know just about everyone thinks Stephen Harper's a joke. So yeah, did you hear about that nudes for votes thing? 
I was listening no. to that today. Evidently, there's what well, you should look. You should look into it. Apparently. Evidently, if you register to vote, there's this organization that will send you nude pictures of your choice. So you get to pick the gender, <laughs> male, female, or anywhere along the binary line. And if you vote and you send them a picture of you voting, they'll send you a picture of whomever you would like to, like whatever gender you would like to see <laughs> I, naked. I, I was I'm like, this is fan- <laughs> yeah, you need to look into this. Incentivize, incentivize voting. Make no it into kidding. Something that's that's how you interest- reach the youth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make or anyone into really? A sex act. <laughs> um, <laughs> only in Canada. Only in exactly Canada. right. I, I do want to. Uh, getting serious for a moment. I, I do want to say in in, um, in response to what you were saying earlier that um, you know giving giving artists a platform to go just beyond talking about the music. Uh, another reason why we love what you do because of course you're focused more on the LGBTQ plus community. Um, but we, that's kind of what, why we do this show as well. Giving artists an opportunity to talk behind like a two minute or five minute interview soundbite and, and being able to dive, dive in a little bit more and, and get to know them as people and get them to share uh, more about themselves. I think that's exciting for a, a fan. You know, I know if I got a ch- chance to watch one of my favorite artists speak for like Jared a half Lowe. hour. I don't know who Jared Leto is. I don't know what you're talking about. I do love Jared Leto. Um, you know, it's, it's, in, it's, it's, Anyways, the point is, I'm, I'm just giving you props for that. Uh, I love that you're doing that. And as a side thing, I will say, Ross, I did love your post on there. I really, really did. Really, really proud of you for that. That was a really good one. Yeah, it, really. you know, Ross did a great job. So Thank Absolutely. Uh, I think I've said this to you before on, on Twitter. I, I wish Punk Out was uh, around, you know, 10, 15 years ago because uh, mm-hmm. it would have made that whole time a little easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insane. Yeah, I mean, I, Ross, I don't know exactly how old you are, but... I think we're kind of in age range, and I, I totally agree. That's one of the reasons why I started Punk Out was because, like, you know, when I was a kid in the local music scene going to, like, you know, hardcore shows at local VFW halls, you know, you didn't see a lot of gay people, and you didn't see a lot of, uh, like, a lot of queer representation within the community. And so that's something we're trying to do, at least change it for the next generation, you know what I mean? So Yeah. Because I always felt that the community was very accepting, uh, yeah. Like I, I, I just always found it a lot more open in a way that I hadn't really found any mm-hmm. kind of group of people to be before. But, uh, but yeah, I'm with you on that. There definitely wasn't the representation there. Yeah. So, like, even though you felt safer, mm-hmm. you know, to to you know maybe to come out or to have those kind of conversations, it didn't. It still didn't feel you know a hundred percent. You know, yeah. you you still didn't feel like this is definitely a one hundred percent safe space i know that these people are going to be fine with whatever i say yeah. um and i think yeah i think uh having the musicians speak out and having people that within the community that you can look up to and you know know that they have been through what you're going through then um yeah it's definitely gonna make things easier yeah. for the next you know for yeah. the people that are growing up now yeah, and I mean, going off of kind of what I said earlier, too, in terms of helping the musicians, you know, you'd be amazed about how many, you know, non-heterosexual, non-cisgendered musicians there are. And, you know, even today, they're, they're still in the closet. I mean, I know a lot of them because this is kind of what I do. So I've, I've had the opportunity and the privilege to meet a lot of people who are still in the closet. A lot of people you wouldn't even expect. And that's the sort of thing that we're trying to build is that internal community. So the, these closeted musicians and these big bands have a platform to come out and feel proud and feel comfortable enough to come out. Because, like, you know, I, I know for a fact some of these individuals you know, have a very big reach. And if they just had the, the, the network themselves to do this, you know, it's super important. And in a lot of times we forget that bands are like, you know, they're a dynamic, you know, there's four or five individuals in that band and you can't mess with that dynamic. So if you have a couple bandmates who are not necessarily welcoming to the LGBT community, what you end up having is, you know, somebody who's closeted in that band, not wanting to rock the boat, not wanting to screw the the band dynamic up. And so what we're trying to do is build up a network where they feel comfortable enough to, you know, take that chance and, and kind of buck the system in a way. Absolutely. Michael, I, I'd like to know what advice you'd offer to anyone who is struggling with their identity right now listening to this. Advice? Well, I mean, we, so that's, it's so hard to give like blanketed advice to anybody, um, especially when you're trying to avoid cliches. Um, like Just it be all yourself. gets. 
Yeah, it gets better. Well, the fact of the matter is it doesn't get better for a lot of people. And so what we try to do is provide people with the understanding that there are other people like them out there. That's the most important, that they're not alone. Um, when, when, you know, people come up to me, I used to have students, you know, unfortunately in this, in the state I live in, Pennsylvania, um, we don't have protections, employment protections if we're gay. And so I couldn't come out to my students. I couldn't be gay to, you know, out to my students where I could technically be fired. I don't think I would have been fired, but I could have, the threat would have been there, it would have been legitimized. So I couldn't even have a picture of my boyfriend on my desk. And so the only way that the kids knew that I was gay was I ran the, the school's uh, Gay Straight Alliance. Uh, which is kind of a giveaway. And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of a giveaway. So like I would meet all the gay kids there. Um, and what I would tell them is that they're not alone. I wouldn't tell them it necessarily gets better because it doesn't. And although I want everybody to come out and be visible, it's not always practical to do so. You know, you have to, you have to think selfishly first. You have to think, you know, is it, is it okay for me to come out right now? You know, am I financially capable of living on my own? You have to think of the worst case scenario and be like, okay, if, you know, I'm a, I'm a 17 year old, I'm a senior in high school, I'm closeted, you know, if I come out to my parents, are they going to kick me out of the house? Am I able to live on my own? Because if the answer is, yeah, they're going to kick you out of the house and no, you're not able to live on your own, I'm not going to give you the advice of coming out. I'm going to say, don't, don't come out. It's not time. Because if you, you know, you have to think selfishly. So in terms of giving advice to people, I really like to keep it, you know, pretty broad and say, you know, hey, listen, you're not alone. There's other people out there who are struggling with the same issues that you are, facing the same challenges you are. Um, so, you know, you want to take the advice with a grain of salt and you want to remember that you know you control your own destiny and you're an individual and not everything is permanent you know the situation you're in now isn't permanent and sometimes you have to wait a little bit to you know be able to be fully who you are you know i like that you uh that you are very realistic about that i wouldn't even call it selfishness it's it's just being smart you know it's making yeah. sure that you're you can take care of yourself and it's a balance of what's more important to you at that time. Even if in s safety is another issue, I mm -hmm. think that to consider, you know, is it safe to come out right now? Are you around a group of people that are supportive? Yeah. You know, is that going to be actually a danger to your, to your, to your, to your safety? Absolutely. You out, you know? Yeah. I mean, depending well, on your job or your environment, yeah. right? What's really interesting is we've seen an increase in LGBT youth homelessness over the past couple years, despite the fact that it seems like it's more comfortable out there for, you know, the LGBTQ community. But what we're actually finding is that, you know, as as kids are watching TV and they're watching, you know, um, Modern Family, I don't, I don't know, Ross, if you watch Modern Family. You do? Yes, yeah, it's yes. a good, you, it's a good show, Do you get it all the way out there show. in Scotland? Yeah, do you, <laughs> is that, do you guys yeah, have you know, TVs? We, we have TVs, we have no. electricity, we have Stop. the internet. We have Star Wars. I've been asked. I think you just got before. Netflix, right? Whoa, um, calm down, calm down, calm down. I know. This is out of it's getting angry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but but Great but, but, but but seriously though, like you know, as we've seen like on media, uh, you know, celebrities coming out and you know the the gay lifestyle. The and we must point out it is a very you know Caucasian gay male lifestyle that mm -hmm. is being represented on media. As we're seeing this, you know, it kind of gives some kids a false hope that it's okay for them to come out now. And what what we're finding is it's it's actually not. You know, Hollywood is always going to be five years ahead of you know the reality on the ground. And so we've seen a, a drastic increase in LGBTQ youth homelessness. In fact, nearly forty. Some studies say over forty percent of uh, the homeless kids in the United States identify as LGBT. That's over 40%. And, and we only make up, at, you know, the most liberal of estimates, we only make up about 5% of the population. So we're right. drastically overrepresented. And so one of the things we're trying to do with Punk Out is kind of get that message out there because we, a lot of these kids are, you know, your alternative type kids or your goth kids or your, you know, your counterculture kids. What music do they listen to? They listen to the music you you and I listen to. And so what better way, what a better vessel to get our message out there and to get to these kids than to go to the music that they listen to all the time. So how would you say that music, musicians and music fans can help to spread Punk Out's message? 
Well, I mean, one of the one of the things that that musicians can do is just by you know talking about the topics that pertain to um, the LGBTQ community. You know, we ask musicians to talk about what we call the three I's: identity, inspiration, and inclusion. Um, and if they can kind of get up there and be vocal and get out, uh, get out their voices in terms of, you know, uh, what inspires them, you know, how they identify and, you know, how they can, you know, what an inclusive environment means to them, uh, that would be, you know, a huge step forward. Um, I'm sure you guys are aware, you know, over the past couple months, there's, you know, the, the topic of misogyny has come up and the role that women play in our scene, it's been a very, uh, toxic topic. Um, but we've seen some good come out of the conversation. Um, you know, bands are focusing on creating safer spaces for everybody. You know, uh, who was that? Was it Sleater Kinney who did the, had the, the posters up at their show, which like basically like outlined a set of rules that at concert attendees, I think it was Sleater Kinney. I'm not quite sure, but there's, there's a band, a uh, pretty bigger band out there who, created uh rules for their shows in terms of like you know the language that you can use at the show and things that you can do um and and it's all in an effort to build in a more inclusive environment and uh you know what you often find is that things are universal by design so like if you're trying to improve the you know the experience that women have in the music scene those things that you do to improve women's experience also go to help other marginalized communities and so you know we don't necessarily think of it as you know what can musicians do to help the lgbtq community we think of it as what can musicians do to help the community at large because you know whatever they do to help us is going to help other people as well and just create a better scene altogether absolutely absolutely okay you ready for 20 questions yeah i'm ready for 20 questions coffee or tea Coffee. Meat or veggies? God. Oh, oh chicken fingers. <laughs> Twitter or Facebook? Twitter. Definitely Twitter. Yoga or yogurt? Yoga. You know, I have a, like, I, I'm freaked out by white liquids in general, and so I don't <laughs> typically eat white liquids. That includes yogurt. Churches or Florence and the Machine? Oh my God, Florence and the Machine. Flo gets up there and she she kills it. Uh, I pick churches. But anyway, we don't have to agree for everything. Here we go. <laughs> now we're getting I, some drama. I'm liking I, this I, now. <laughs> I like churches. I like churches. That new I know you do. They're one of your, they're, one, they're one of your albums of the year so far. I stalk you on yeah, Facebook. Yeah. I know. I, have, I know where it's at. Oh my god. There's like 25 <laughs> out records on that. I don't know how I'm, I'm going to whittle it down. I know. I'm interested to see what's, uh, what's going to be there at the end of the year. I'm uh, watching. Yeah. Thanks. Watching you. Football or baseball? Uh, football, American football. Friends or Seinfeld? Taking it back to the 1990s. Oh, it's got to be Friends. Ross is like my hero. And also the character on the show. Uh, <laughs> see what I did there? Uh, yeah, I, see. I see what you did there. Uh, I'm so clever. Okay. No, sorry, we'll move on. Yeah, no, that kind of fell flat. <laughs> <laughs> Fallout Boy or Panic at the Disco? Uh, Fallout Boy. Canada or Scotland? I'm going to go with Canada, but Ross, let me tell you why. Go with Canada because hockey is my favorite sport. That's okay. It, it sounds like it's good for me now until the end of the 20 questions, <laughs> and you'll see what I mean soon. <laughs> brand new or Taking Back Sunday? Oh my God, brand new. House of Cards or Orange is the New Black? Orange is the New Black. City in Color or Alexis on Fire? Oh, damn it. Oh, Sorry. God. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, uh, City in Color. But that wow. doesn't mean I'm not very excited for them to kind of be back together. Alexis on fire, that is. They are. Little yeah. side note, Chris Steele did play bass on one of my songs on my record. Did he? He did. Song did called Doctor Please. Did he run around without a shirt on, looking like a madman the whole no, time? No, he was pretty chill. Oh, <laughs> pretty chill, weird. good dude. We had a good time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I may or may not have like the biggest crush on Dallas Green. Yeah. It's my hero. <laughs> Dallas Green can do no wrong. That was my uh, my bio on, I want to say MySpace or MSN uh, back in the day. Uh, it was it was some it was it was everywhere. Let's face it, it was everywhere. Yeah, um, the amount of sitting color lyrics on my Zango were kind of out of control. <laughs> What's Zango? You didn't want you didn't use a Zanga? I don't know. Oh oh wait, 
I know I never had it. No I was idea. live journal. Right, I was on the journal. Uh, yeah, I was well, live journal let's, too, just, yeah. let's just keep it that way. Um, you know, our stuff's still up there. Somewhere. You know, I was going to say, I hope they've taken it. I don't know what I have oh in live God. journal. I am terrified. If anyone, this is a challenge for our, our viewers and listeners. If anyone can find my old live journal um, and see if there's anything on there, like, I don't know, you'll win like a free CD of mine or something like that because I, I don't know <laughs> if it's still on there. And if it is, I'm terrified. So. Uh, <laughs> Did you write poetry when you were younger? You uh, write I've written poetry before? since I was a kid, but on Live oh, yeah. Journal was more like the place to air out your laundry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, think I was I like came a 16, 17 year old. Did you really? Yeah. I came out on there, but then I quickly took it back. <laughs> <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> yeah, and then the joke is I had a girlfriend for four years. But... Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's the loser in that battle. Paris or Paramore? Uh, oh. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Paris right now because Lynn Gunn she's she's on point but you know that's a that's a toss up. I I would be t- like I'm really into the Paris record but Paramore's been around for so long how do you like just kind of you know it's almost like you can't compare it. Yeah yeah you know? yeah and so that was a mean one. I, it was mean you know, for me to it say it. So. Yeah I'm cheering so, yeah. so hard for Paris. I'm cheering so hard for them. Yeah I love Paris love them. Um right Breaking Bad or Homeland. Homeland. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? <laughs> oh, Michael Bolton. I do a mean Michael Bolton karaoke. Yeah, you picked him. <laughs> Dude? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you shouldn't have said that because now we're going to ask you to do that. <laughs> oh. Give us a little impression. We're going we're gonna to hold off on that. Right. What happens at karaoke stays at karaoke, <laughs> and it usually involves several, several drinks. Right, right. <laughs> Celine Dion? Or... Celine Dion. No, no reason to keep going. <laughs> no reason? No. You, do you not even want to know what she was up against? Who was she up against? She was up against Marilyn Manson. Oh, Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Gervais Promise. or Ricky Martin? Ricky Martin. Okay, then. You, you, you know, I'm just, I'm, just going, I'm just going to pick the gay people now. I'm going <laughs> not oh, well, that Dion goes well for the next few questions. Yeah, here we go. Whale or kale? Whale or kale? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Neither of them are gay. <laughs> no, but I feel like whales have a better chance of being, so I'm going to go with whale. Yeah, I was going to say. Okay, um, Bette Midler or the Riddler? The Riddler. I, I'm shocked you didn't pick Bette Midler. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I don't know what down. to think now. <laughs> Sorry to let you down. <laughs> and finally, this is where I get, like, everyone picks Canada, and then they're like, okay. Ra- oh, sorry, that's you. <laughs> or is that me? Or is that you? No, that's... Who is it? Who are, I don't know. Let's say it at the same time, ready? <gasps> Rosa Marcio, you didn't even fucking say it at the same time. <laughs> oh, uh, Rosa Marcio. We're gonna go with, and I'm gonna. This is purely based on fashion choices today. We're gonna go with Ross because I was I was looking at his shirt before the interview even started. So it was like Ross, you got a great shirt on going on. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? You. Almost everyone picks <laughs> Ross. I just. <laughs> This is too. I think I've gotten like five out of like the sixty. But you know what's funny? Like, this this question was your <laughs> idea, Marcio. I know it this was. Question. I'm like, it'll be hilarious. <laughs> then we could tally it up, and I'll totally get more than you, and it's totally backfired on me. <laughs> totally. Marcio, you gotta go with a, you gotta go with a louder shirt next time. I know. I gotta be like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to do. Marcio just needs to actually change his shirt once in a while because he's worn this for the last three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we may have recorded this interview in the last two in the same day, but thanks, Ross. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so Michael, yeah, give us one band or one movie or one television show um, that everyone should watch. Maybe a documentary that everyone that is interested in um, LGBTQ plus should check out. Hmm. I know it's tough. We bring out well, the real questions here. Yeah. Uh, Movie-wise. Well, okay. How about this? I'll give you a TV show. And if you're into L- the LGBTQ community, it's a, it's a web series called The Outs. Um, and they're coming back for their second season next year. Uh, and it's it's a brilliant web series, The Outs. Um, and uh, the cast went on to do another web series called whatever this is, but I'm a big fan of the outs in terms of a, a web series. I don't really watch that m- many movies. I don't have the patience for it. I can't sit down. <laughs> I, I, I can't sit down for that amount of time, except for Twister, which is a brilliant film and Jurassic Park. Uh, so but, you're stuck in the nineties too. This is good. Yeah. I, I have, it's not just you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, think I think there's something about our, our music scene. We all kind of, 
want like late nineties and uh, early two yeah. thousands. I think that's kind of the era we're stuck in. And we don't want to grow happy up. With that. I'm we okay refuse with to grow up. <laughs> um, yeah, and in terms of uh, in terms of music, um, I know that they're not really you know undergrounds, uh, but uh, you know years and years over in uh, your land, uh, Ross. Um, I'm a big fan of Oli Alexander. I, you know, he did an interview recently where he talked about the use of pronouns in his songs. He, he's out and uh, gay, and um, he talked about how he doesn't, you know, change pronouns a lot in his songs. He just he just keeps it as male pronouns, and that's something we don't see. There's a lot of pronoun switching in music, so I'm gonna I'm gonna push uh, years and years because you can't have enough enough number one artists for people to listen to. So yeah. You rock, Michael. I think everyone needs to check out uh, punkout.org and uh, punkoutlgbt on Twitter and Instagram. And your mm. Facebook is, uh, I think it's the same thing, punkoutlgbt. Yes, um, everyone needs to check you guys out. Um, I'm a supporter. Uh, Ross doesn't like you guys, though. That's oh, I think it's clear. That's all right. <laughs> we, we accept Ross for who he is. <laughs> yeah. And I'm currently writing my next solo album and I've just released my electronic side project, Midnight Soundtracks debut album, Four Play. Uh, you can hear my music on marcinvella.com. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. And uh, they are all slash Marciano Velli. And I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work at electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton Presents. Find out more about what our good friend Chris does and how he can help you at chriskeaton.com. And if you'd like to support the show, visit uh, patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. This has been awesome, Michael. Seriously, thank you so much for coming on. Well, I really and coming out. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Don't tell my mom. Um, I'm kidding. Maybe. Uh, yeah, no, I really appreciate you guys giving uh, giving us a chance to kind of talk and uh, any any chance to forward the conversation. So, uh, thanks for forwarding the conversation and uh, helping a lot of kids out there. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Click on the videos above us if you'd like to see more. And please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome. And we'll see you on next week's episode.